Dobro jutro, kačic, vsegda prijatno, pa iti srede, druzi in so krovic, če najti se mi. The paradigm is shifting. So I'm going to share a little story of mine up in Canada. There's a place in Ontario and Saskatchewan where there was high UFO activity. And one of these places was a cove. And it was like a little nestled cove that was nicknamed Ketchikut. Uh, it was next to Devil's Cove and uh, Katy Cove and some other just locally named places. Uh, so I'd be taken to Canada every year and then I'd have blackouts and then not know what happened when I was up there. So this one particular instance, the Ketchikut Cove had some high supernatural activity there. And I was in a boat uh, with my father. So when we went up to this certain spot, he'd always have some weird like training methodology and tell me to jump out of the boat and to tread water or something until I couldn't tread water anymore just for like endurance testing or something. Um, so I really hated these activities. You'd have some sonar radar underneath the boat and then you'd like get dropped off at the deepest spot. And so I was just really sick of this training and I ended up uh, taking his pocket knife out not sure what like this was but you could see and feel the opening of it <clears throat> and certain lights permeating in the water so as this was rising up um, my head started getting affected because I was feeling the scalar beam weapons hit my head and then also from the sky there was another portal opening from a sky UFO so at the same time they like were pairing together and I was caught in the middle of this maelstrom because there would be like freak storms that would happen on this lake and UFO sightings and abductions and Bigfoot activity. So when both of these, the USO and the UFO, um, opened up interdimensionally together and hit me on my forehead with a scalar beam, um, I didn't know where direction was under the water. It's like I was in black water and I got really disoriented and panicked and full of fear and then what also happened when these events happened was that the the Sasquatch in Saskatchewan that were on this particular cove and nook area they would freak out because they're very territorial for one and these fallen beings since they're from the bloodline of Cain an actual race from Cain um, they would freak out get territorial because the fallen angels they and the fallen kingdom of darkness thinks that they own any race that came from Cain's lineage, including the Bigfoots. So they've been experimented on too. They've taken their hides, they've made them cybernetic, they've made them have strange fire and red fire eyes. They've done all sorts of things and experiments with the Yeti. And there was some compassion that was felt at Montauk and other areas where people had interfaces and experiences with the Yeti race. Um, so they haven't been redeemed. They hide. Nobody's ever presented the gospel to them because there's still a blood barrier between that and the time isn't allowed yet. But I do believe that someday, from what I've seen with my experiences with Bigfoot, that, that they can be changed 
And I don't know what that's going to look like or how or the man and the humanity that's still left inside of them. However, that's going to be redeemed. Um, I know that time is coming too. Because I've seen them tortured by government operations and the military. Unjustly. But anyways, I was under the water in this instance. My head got hit with the scalar beams. I got disoriented. And I didn't realize what was happening at the time. But there was there a marine kingdom there. There's actual steps that led down to this place too. And there was... Um, an attempt to take my crown because the Bible says let no man take your crown so what they did in this instance um, it felt like hot searing fire on my forehead they chipped off a piece of my crown and this may seem sound strange to people but uh, Lucifer has actually taken gems off of people's crowns and worn them as a vestment so when you go and you attack like higher principalities by yourself which you're not supposed to and other things you're attacking the the human parts and pieces that they wear as part of their armor investments. So that's why you get extreme backlash because you're not doing it uh, right in the spiritual warfare realm. And some things are left specifically for the angels to go and retrieve because um, we can get all of our stolen essence and everything that's been stolen from us back. And God does redeem the time so anyways, I didn't know what was happening at the time. I knew something had affected my head. I thought I got hit with something. I mean, it felt like a, almost like a bullet hit my forehead. And I heard my dad's voice in the boat. Um, he was pretty scared. He didn't want me to die, I don't think, in this moment, in this instance. But I didn't go to him. And instead, I called out to God. I called out to Yahushua. And he was the one who pulled me out of this dark water and up onto the surface. And I don't know how I got back onto the land, to the shoreline, but it was only through God's mercy and grace to not give me over to the Marine Kingdom or to death or to the craft, to abduction, whatever the scenarios could have been and the choices, whatever could have happened to me. He instead intervened and was there and kept me moving forward because it wasn't my time. So then when we got onto shore, we would go around this little this little trail and we would hear these four people who were elders of this place. We're in the middle of nowhere. And one was an old man that had a white beard and they all had staffs representing their authority, which God broke in half later on. And the three women were three crones that were with this old man. So people without spiritual eyes would have thought, okay, these guys are just weirdos that live out in the middle of nowhere in the woods in a little cabin by themselves. Like there's some little clan or a harem or something, but there was more going on than this. These four old beings had taken over people's bodies that did live on that island. And we called them Transylvanian nomads because at first I didn't know what they were. They would sit there in chairs and play accordions. And what they were playing was actually like a fallen angel type of frequency and tech because angels have their own weapons of warfare and bands and frequencies and they can change frequencies anywhere and destroy things just with their frequencies. So when these guys would start playing their accordions and it sounded like gypsy, um, tranced out Transylvania music, I called it, it would make me um, nauseous. It would make me sick. It would just make me cringe when I would go up closer to them. And they knew what they were. And so every time that we talked to them every year we went up here, they would laugh at us. They're, they're laughing in your face because these four humans weren't human. They had stolen the humanity. They take what's little, what little is left of essence to keep the body going a little longer. And they um, basically soul scalp the body and take over the body. And they were the, the marine spirits that were underneath the water doing all this chaos and um, having territorial warfare with these Bigfoots. So they were in the flesh, yes, but they were from the marine because when they would turn around and they go back to the woods, their eyes became like globes, like fish globes. So uh, they were high-ranking marine level entities, but I'm not sure what tethering they had to go up into the UFO or in the craft, if they could go under 
water and in the sky. So there's principalities of the air and different ones of the water. So I don't know if they were bound to this cove maybe or a particular area, but um, they had fun with these games. They knew what they were doing. And when I would stand there and talk to them, they'd tell us like ancient stories uh, of the cove or something. I blacked out a lot of what they would say to me because the spiritual warfare that was going on in this instance was that my head would start bowing to them because all four of them would hold out their staffs and try to steal my crown because they had already chipped off that piece. That's why they were laughing at me because they knew by the time that I got home into the States that I wouldn't remember this event. So my head would start going down like an electromagnetic pull, like bowing to them. And then I would stand rigid and push my heels into the ground and go backwards so that my head wouldn't give them any of my um, crown energy because our crowns are actually sentient things too. And they sing and they radiate uh, light and hold the essence of Jesus Christ and his realm within it. So that's why we cast our crowns there because it's a powerful um, game changer when we do that. So uh, these beings ended up, I don't know how many years they did this, but um, in amnesia, you know, they had taken a piece of uh, my spiritual armor and I did get that back. Um, so this is just a lesson that how crafty these beings can be and how they're really after every part of you, not just your soul, not just your spirit, not just uh, hell bent on breaking you up, but they want like your crowning jewels. They want your gifts. They want everything that God put in you. And the, they find ways to take it all. So when you ask God to show you the truth in all things, to bring back remembrance of all things, because it says he does bring back remembrance of all things. He'll show you what's pertinent and he'll show you uh, how to work with heaven and um, how to counteract and how to, how to plead the throne, how to go into the courts of heaven, how to see his mercy and his justice at play because it's perfect mercy and perfect justice and these beings gotten take they got taken care of and like i said their staffs were broken in half their bodies disintegrated into the the cabin floor and they weren't operational and active anymore in this area because they had affected this whole area for a very long time and the bigfoots ended up living in peace out there once they left um, because they don't just abduct humans, these types of crafts and stuff, and the manufactured beings on them, they'll abduct animals. Um, and they also have abducted Bigfoot. So there was a lot going on, uh, and still does in Saskatchewan, but at least this one particular area had divine intervention and got um, completely cleared. And the entrance to the USO was sealed. The interdimensional portal opening in the sky was sealed. And there is resounding peace there because God has life-saving power, life-changing power, and he can return our innocence, return anything if it's good and fit in his sight. Um, so another thing to do is just ask what's good and right in his sight and receive what he has for you, not according to your own workings and imaginations that you think you deserve, or but just what he knows that you need. And he'll do above and beyond what you even think above and beyond our wildest imaginations. So take that to heart. And Yerad Vozdat Yemu Slavu Imne Bilo Priatno Polisia Svami Chasyami Moye Zizniv Sladiuch. Sladiushechim, I have broken Russian, by the way. Sezon eto frado gatovka. Inovia paradigm. The paradigm has shifted. Praise God. Slava Bogu.